Okay, so I've gotten a lot of grief over one of my videos I did that wasn't any video in particular. And unfortunately, people can't read the description and understand that that was a 30 second video of something. I don't have the previous or post shots of that video. It was just a quick little video connecting a truck. All it was was to couple the truck and that was it. They also didn't realize that I drove the trailer from one position to another position, dropped it much as I have this trailer, and just a little little video wasn't instructional. So being that I'm doing the tutorial and I've got a little bit of time, I figured I might as well clear this up now, okay, because people are starting to question my professionalism maybe, or well, I don't know. But uh, I think it's just so super truckers, you know, between you and me, that think they know everything and that just want to give grief to other drivers. I can handle it, I'm bigger than them. What you got to do, once you figure out what your trailer is going to be, you got to get lined up to the trailer. Now, the easiest way to figure that out is when you look in your mirror, all right? This one doesn't have it, but usually there's rivets along the side. You want to count from the edge of the, the trailer three rivets in, all right? Three rivets in to the corner of your tread, all right? So one, two, three, three rivets, boom, right there into, the, into your tread. That's going to line you up with the kingpin underneath the trailer. All right. Usually you want to stop where the trailer is just kind of over your uh, last drive axle or between your axles, depending on where your fifth wheel is located. All right. I kind of did it a little too fast. I got it up a little too far, but uh, nevertheless, it's not that big of a deal. Basically, you don't want to touch the fifth wheel yet. You just want to kind of get in front of the fifth wheel. All right. Because you're checking the height of the trailer, whether it's too low or too high. All right. The last thing you want to do is nail the end of the trailer with the fifth wheel. And the really big last thing you want to do is have the trailer too high, ride the kingpin up and over your fifth wheel and get it latched on the other side. Let me tell you, that's a bugger to deal with when that happens, all right? You want to get out before it touches. Now that you've seen that, what you want to do, you want to climb underneath it. And you want to line yourself up with the pin and you want to make sure that it's going to go right into the slot for the fifth wheel, all right? This time it's also a good thing. You can take a look at the lock jaw and make sure that it's actually unlocked and you're not going to have a problem. Also look for any debris that might be on the strike plate around the key pin, anything that could snag it or anything like that. So now that you've lined the truck up, now it's time to go inside and start coupling. You're going to back up really slowly until you hear the lock jaw is locked. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do a tug test. So you're going to put it in the lowest gear, forward gear. And you're going to release the clutch, or if it's an automatic, just kind of ease on the throttle. And pull against the fifth wheel. All right, that'll make sure that the lock jaw is actually locked. Now what you're going to do, you're going to walk back here. You're going to take a look between the fifth wheel and the bottom of the trailer. Make sure there's no daylight between the two. And you're also going to make sure the handle is in the in position, all right? That will give you an indication that the jaws have locked. After that, you got to crawl back underneath. And you're going to take a look at the fifth wheel and make sure that the jaw is locked. So there's the uh, locked jaw around the fifth wheel, the kingpin. You'll see up at the top there, wherever my finger is, that silver there is the kingpin, and then that bar going across is the lock jaw. So the fifth wheel is nice and tight. So now that you've checked that, you're going to come and you're going to hook up your air lines. The blue line is your service line. What that is, is it's the air line that when you hit the brakes, it sends the air into the brake chambers. This one's a good thing to have. Before you do that, I like I said, I dropped this trailer and I had this truck, you know, I've already checked it before. You want to check your O-rings. Make sure that there's no rips or cuts, any grit in them whatsoever. This one's got a screen. Make sure that the screen isn't, you know, freaking deformed and nothing's in there. 
as well as you got one on the uh, glad hand on the trailer make sure that thing is is good as well sometimes you might have to lube it right if it's a hot summer day or something drivers normally spit on them and that gives it just enough lubrication to be able to spin so you'll connect those these one, I like these ones because it's got the handle some of them don't they've just got like this uh, this spring here right up to there so you really don't have much this here is connected all together so it gives you a little bit of leverage to get it going connect that. make sure that it's locked everything is touching and that they're lined up then your green line is your electrical line make sure there's nothing in the pins there all right this one's a little on the loose side it's okay I've had it checked by the uh, mechanic there at the yard when he did the service but uh, you know what I'm going to keep an eye on this because you never know sometimes it's actually a good thing I've I've had it where a lot of electrical lines have broken somehow one way or another so it's probably a good thing to actually have a spare on hand go ahead and connect that make sure the prongs in there as well on the trailer side are okay they're not broken or bent you catch one of those and you're really good there's also on the uh, little flap there's a little uh, little catcher because on, on the cord itself you'll see how it comes up and then it's got a little stop there so what happens is the flap will rest here it'll sit in that groove and it won't be able to come out so you got to make sure that it's all the way in and that the flap is sitting properly on it. Give it a little tug maybe. Then your red line is probably the most important line next to the blue. This one is your supply line. That supplies the air to the trailer. It fills up the air tanks back there. Once again, you got to check your O-rings on both sides. These are good. I've checked them before just making myself clear because you know super trucker somewhere is going to come along I know even though I've cleared myself and we'll go ahead and these are pretty simple you see that this has uh, the line there the, the extended part there it's got a little grippy thing there mirror image on that side you just start from the top and you work counterclockwise now your airlines are hooked up now as long as it went easy getting underneath it, you know that whoever dropped the trailer was smart and actually knew how to do it. There's two ways to drop it, and I'll get into that next time. This one was dropped one of two ways. There's a high and low gear. If the feet are still touching the ground with a lot of pressure, like I can, I can see this one's alright. Put it in the low position, give it a couple of spins until you feel the tension release. Don't break your back. Now once it's released, the tension is released, then you can stick it in the high gear and roll them on up as high as you can. Pull the arm out, and if you've got a hook, hook it. If you don't, if there's somewhere where you can kind of place it, some of them you can kind of tuck somewhere. Okay, now there are some steps that I have deliberately missed because they are part of a pre-trip inspection, all right? You should be going underneath it and checking the frame, checking the adjustment of the brakes. That will be on another video. That will be on a pre- and post-trip video, okay? So those of you super truckers out there, don't worry, I will cover it eventually. Right now, I'm just telling you the basics on how to do it. Turn the truck on and start it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the red button. Okay, so now that you've gone inside, you've hit the red button. That's putting the air into the air tanks for the trailer. All right. So at this point, the brakes are released in the trailer. What you don't want to do is release them both. Make sure the yellow one is still out, the brake for the cab, all right? Otherwise, this thing is just going to roll over you. Right now, the brakes are released on the trailer, as well as 
The suspension should always, always, always be dumped when you're dropping the trailer. And I'll get into that again in the post or in the uh, the disconnect video. But uh, if it's not down, you're going to do some damage. Okay. What you want to do? Holy crap! I felt like Trucker D there. What you want to do while you're back here? There should always be a little valve for the air suspension. This one's just a little lever. Some of them are a button that you got to push. All right. Whatever the case is, fill the tanks with air, and you'll slowly start to see the trailer rise up as air is put into the, uh, the airbags. So as I've stated over and over in this video, this is just a quick look at the basics of connecting a truck. I know I haven't done a pre-trip on it, that will be in another video, all right? This is just the physics of connecting. You haven't checked the brakes, you haven't checked the lights, you haven't done your proper tug test, all you've done is the one for the kingpin, but the brakes you haven't done. Load securement is a whole other story, all right? All is not, that's not covered in this video, all right? This is just to connect it, all right? This is also, by the British Columbia laws in BC Canada specifically from the school I went to four years ago alright now if anything's changed or anything is different in Zimbabwe I you know what those case so be it you can leave a nice comment but I'm not gonna put up with super truckers sitting there saying well you shouldn't be a driver alright that's gonna get you nowhere Alright, I'll take good criticism, and I might even put some of it to use, which I already have, but you're going to be a dink about it. Anyways, that's getting a little too personal. So that basically wraps up this tutorial. Um, next I'll be doing the disconnect, and uh, shortly after that I'll probably get to the pre-trip, so that way everybody's taken care of. Anyways, thanks for watching. I think it's just so super truckers, you know, between you and me. Holy crap, I felt like Trucker D there.